Hello everyone, my name is Dave, and this is part two of a video series where I'm going to show you how to create a tower-based defense game 100% from scratch using C++ and SDL2. In the previous video, I set up pathfinding for enemy units so that they move towards the center of the base. And in this part, I'm going to show you how to make them disappear when they get there. To do this, we're going to need a way to determine when they get to the center. I'm also going to modify the code so that they move to the center of the target tile rather than just stay at the edge. And we're also going to need to set up some code to remove the enemy unit from the game when it gets there. I set up the code so that the origin, zero in the x direction and zero in the y direction, is at the upper left corner of the window. And the position of the unit is defined by the tile that it's within. This means that the unit shown in front of you is at 0.5 in the x direction and 0.5 in the y direction. If it moves to the right as shown, its new position is 2.25x and 0.5y. If it were to move down, its new position is now 2.25x and 2.5y. This means that if the location of the center target tile is known, all that needs to be done is to check if the unit is within it or not. So in this case, if both the x and y coordinate of the unit starts with a 2, then it would mean that the unit is within it, because the center tile is at 2 in the x direction and 2 in the y direction. Let's go to the code for the unit class. The code that's responsible for its movement is in the update function of the CPP file. The target that it moves towards, which in the previous video was fixed to the center of the level, is contained within the level class. To get it, its getTargetPose function must be called. I'm going to add a little bit of code here to compare the unit's current position to the target position. And if true, then a breakpoint will be triggered. I'm going to run the game, place a unit, and see what happens. Ah, the breakpoint has been hit. Perfect. Now we have a way to know when a unit has gotten to the center of the level. This is great, but currently the unit will only move to the edge of the target tile and not go within it. So I'm also going to modify the code so that it will go to the center of the target tile. Right now, the direction the unit moves, called direction normal, is set by the flow field based on what tile the unit is currently in. However, the way the flow field is set up, there's no normal for the target tile. It's just set to zero in the x direction and zero in the y direction. This is because once the unit has reached the target tile, there is nowhere for it to go. Therefore, I'm going to move the code that I just added that checks if the unit has reached the target tile to just below where the direction normal is set. I'm also going to modify it to set the direction normal to point towards the target position. By getting the level's target position, subtracting the unit's position from it, and of course, normalizing the result to ensure that the vector's magnitude is one. I'm also going to add a comment to make it clear what the changes to the code do. Okay, let's see what happens when I run the game and place a unit. Hmm, well, it's sort of working because now the units move into the target tile but they're going to the upper left-hand corner rather than the center. Let's take a look at the getTargetPose function in the level class to see if it can help solve this. You may recall from the last video that the target x and target y variables are both integers. The function casts them to floats and outputs a vector 2D with their values. This means that it's outputting the upper left corner of the tile. However, the center of the tile 
is half a tile from there, meaning that 0.5 needs to be added in the x and y directions. I'm going to run the game again and see if this fixed it. Ah, very nice. The units are moving towards the center of the tile now. Perfect. The next thing to do is to add code to remove the unit once it gets to the center of the target tile. I'm going to go back to the unit.cpp file and add some code to check if the distance to the target tile is less than half. If that's the case, then I'm going to set a variable called isAlive to false. I'm going to add this new variable to the units header file with a default value of true, meaning that by default, it's alive. I'm also going to add a function called get is alive, which will return the value of is alive. In the update function in the game.cpp file, I'm going to modify the loop that updates all the units. Like before, it's going to loop through and update each of them one by one. However, I've added some code that checks to see if the unit is alive or not. If not, then the unit is erased from the list of units. Otherwise, the iterator is incremented to point towards the next unit. I'm going to run the game and play some units. Ah, perfect. When they get close to the center of the target tile, they're removed. So this means that everything's working correctly. The last thing I want to do is modify the target tile image because I think it looks a bit strange that all of the units disappear when they get to a green X. I think it makes a lot more sense for it to look like they're going somewhere. For example, a portal, a hole, or something along those lines. When the new image is loaded into the game, I think it looks a lot better. However, units must still be placed manually by clicking the mouse. What we really want is for them to spawn on their own. However, this is a good place to stop for this video, and I'll continue in the next one. All the source code is available on my website. Link is in the description. I've also got a bunch of other games, code, and tutorials on my channel and website, as well as a course where I create a Falling Sand platformer game 100% from scratch. Feel free to check those out if you're interested. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you in the next one.